Hey guys, Chris here. In this video, we are doing the motorway range test in the Mercedes-Benz EQE 300. So today, we're gonna find out just how far this car can go on a full charge of battery on a motorway at motorway speeds. And then at the end of the video, we're gonna put this car into a chart and see how it actually compares against all the other EVs we have done this test with. And guys, I'm so excited for testing this car today because I think it may actually be able to perform the best of all the EVs we have done this test with. I think it's easily going to break the 400 kilometer mark and maybe even be able to hit 450, maybe even more. So this has a WLTP rated range of 639, but this car, since it's on 19 inch wheels, it's a little bit less at 600. And 17 kilometers but remember guys WLTP and real world at motorway speed is very very different and keen viewers may have seen that we are actually at a new location that is because we have a brand new sponsor here on the channel called Recharge and Recharge they are actually the largest provider of lightning fast and rapid charging in the Nordic countries in Norway, Sweden, and Finland with 2,600 charging points, which is just completely, I mean, mind boggling how many charging points they have. But that means we are now starting at McDonald's in Gardermoen at the Recharge Chargers here, which is about 20 kilometers north of the old route. And then we're going a little further north than the Mias Tower and then back again. So the old route was 232 kilometers. This new one is 216. A little bit shorter but we're starting about 20 kilometers north of the old route meaning that we have a lot less traffic once we enter the motorway which means the test and the speed should be much more precise and comparable to the different cars i mean there's always going to be a slight variation because i'm driving according to the speedometer but the results should be even more precise than before and also we're starting directly in the 110 zone before we started in the 100 zone, we had a few kilometers, you know, each way with 100 zone, meaning the average speed was a little bit lower. So this new test with a little bit higher average speed should be more relevant to more people out there in the world. So guys, I do apologize for the lengthy intro, but I wanted to do introduce, you know, the new route and the new sponsor here on the channel. So we are currently at 91% state of charge, which is plenty enough to get started. So let's get on our way and I'll see you guys on the road. We are now Oscar Mike, and this is the first update at the Minnesun Brua. And you can see the windsock looks completely still because, according to the wind map, we do have you know a slight headwind from the northwest of about one meter per second. But it seems and looks and feels so calm outside. And what a beautiful day to do a test like this! It's not the warmest, it's uh, you know 14 15 degrees outside, or actually 13 and a half, according to. Uh, the display down there uh, and we've been on the road for about 15 minutes and consumption is 19.1 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers 19.2 and that is pretty darn low I do think it may be, it's maybe gonna rise uh, you know after a, a while maybe we're heading towards a headwind so if it stays at 19 or around 20 it may you know drop a little bit on our way uh, once we uh, turn back and it's really nice to drive this car you know on the motorway it is very very quiet it's not as quiet as you know i remember the eqs being or me maybe even the eqc maybe because it has lower ground clearance than the eqc but does it really because the eqc doesn't have much ground clearance i don't know maybe it is the tires on this car bridgestone Taranzas, which in my experience bridgestones are more noisy than other tires i don't know what it is with bridgestones because i think you know the wind noise is kept to a minimum, but there is some tire noise there. Though this does not have, you know, the double pane glass, I can hear some, you know, buffeting off the wing mirrors. But other than that, this is a very quiet and comfortable car to drive in. Though I have one complaint, you know, sitting in this car, is that the dashboard is so high. I don't know, it just, the dashboard feels so darn big, especially hopping out of that, you know, uh, Skoda Enyaq I drove, uh, uh, last week. Yeah, I don't know why why they did that, but okay guys We're gonna head on now and I'll catch up with you once we get to Miastorna Here we are this is the Miastorna the Mias Tower our old turnaround point this beautiful Wooden building on our left, which is basically a skyscraper made out of wood and glass 
and it is pretty cool. But okay, this is our old exit, but we are going to continue on now for about 15 kilometers. So, uh, yeah, the motorway continues for another 15 kilometers and then it stops. And that's pretty much why our, you know, route isn't longer because, yeah, the motorway stops. But they are constructing motorway north of this or the point where it stops. But it won't be finished before probably a few years. But maybe in the future, we will then extend uh, the route. But, well, as things are now, I think this route at 216 kilometers is still good enough because a lot of EVs in winter aren't even able to, well, cover this distance. So, guys, we're going to continue on out, and I'll catch up with you once we get to our turnaround point. Okay, here we are. This is the end of the motorway. And our exit is, well, 100, 200 meters over there. You can see the exit sign, exit 76. So we're going to exit here and then we're going to go underneath the motorway and then we're going to enter on this side over here. So here we're going to exit and guys, look at the consumption, 19.4 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. So this is going to be very interesting to see. Once we turn around and start heading south again, will the consumption drop or will it go up or will it stay the same? At around 19 kilometers, no, 19 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, I think this car should be a little bit more, you know, efficient than that. This does have a drag coefficient at 0.2 which is, well, with the EQS and also the Lucid Air, the lowest drag coefficient of any EV currently on sale. But this is a smaller car and the drag coefficient is all, always relative to the frontal area. Um, so having a smaller car with the same drag coefficient will actually mean less drag. So, I think this should be a little bit more efficient. I'm hoping we should get it down to maybe 18, maybe like right below 18 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. That would pretty be pretty awesome. So guys, let's continue on now and I'll talk to you guys in, well, for you it will be just a second, but for me it will be an hour. Okay, here we are at our exit, exit uh, 51, I think. And then once we uh, go here, we're going to have to stop uh, the timer. So oh, just give me a second here, guys. Stop the timer. There we go. Um, OK, so sunset. We are now back at our starting point and consumption is now down to 19.2 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. Yeah, that is not bad at all. And as you guys can see, hmm, I was hoping that one of these uh, 220 kilowatt chargers uh, were vacant because we are now down to 45% state of charge. And I want to see what kind of charging speed we actually get. But this guy in an e-golf is actually using the 225 charger, 25 kilowatt charger. So yeah, hmm. so maybe we're just going to sit here for a few minutes. Uh, you know, the battery should still be up to temperature if we wait like five or ten minutes. Let's see if this guy in this e-golf maybe uh, uh, scoots and is done because I want to see if we can get, you know, that peak charging speed of 170 kilowatts with this EQE. Okay, guys, we are now charging. But if you guys can see, it is actually dark outside because it's about... An hour and a half later <laughs> and I'll explain in just a second but yeah we're connected here 34 35 percent state of charge and this is only a 150 kilowatt charger we are now connected to but I wanted to you know just charge in this video to see if we could get at least 150 kilowatts because you know if we're gonna top out at 130 140 it doesn't matter if we went to a hundred and you know 200 kilowatt charger or, or whatever but if we po uh, top out at 150 we know that there's a you know a, a huge likelihood that we would actually charge yeah um at 170 kilowatts but again i don't know what the charging curve of this car looks like but 
I'm pretty sure three hours on the road, 272 kilometers now at 36% stated charge with an ambient temperature of 10 degrees Celsius outside, we should be able to get more than 99 kilowatts, right? We should be. But yeah, that's quite weak. Hmm. That is not impressive. This is 150 kilowatt charger. We are the only car connected to this. And we have a, uh, well, we actually have a 200 kilowatt charger to our left flanking, but I am never able to get more than 70 out of that charger. And then we have 125 to our right, but uh, yeah, no cars are connected to any other chargers here. So why aren't we getting more than 100 kilowatts? But okay. Hmm. Before we end today's video, let's take a look at the battery pack size, the consumption, and then calculate theoretical range. But before we do that, let me explain what's happened for the past hour and a half. So I waited at the recharge chargers at the McDonald's in Garden Moon for about half an hour, but none of the chargers became vacant. You know, around dinner time, a lot of people were coming into the charger, going to eat at McDonald's. So it was probably the worst time for me to try to get one complete charger vacant because if it's splitting the charge, they are splitting in 75 kilowatt modules. So a 225 kilowatt charger, if there's another car connected, even though it's not charging at more than 75 kilowatts, I'm still not gonna get more than 150 kilowatts. So I drove to two other recharge locations, one at Al Nabru where they have a 300 kilowatt charger and one at Vindren where they had two 225 kilowatt chargers. But the same thing there, there was a car connected to each of those chargers. So I just like, oh, I'm just gonna drive home. So lastly, I tried to go here, which is close to where I lived before. Here they have um, uh, a Delta charger from Coppola. It's not recharged, but you know, I had to charge the car, but usually here it, it is vacant. So they have 150 kilowatt charger here. Um, so that's what's been happening. So, I mean, I could have charged no problem at all. I could have gotten 150 kilowatt, but I was really trying to see if we could go to, well, a 150 kilowatt plus charger, but you know, from the charging curve here, only getting 106 kilowatts still here after being connected. Yeah, it, it really didn't matter, but that's, that's the reason. But okay, guys, enough about that. Let's hop into today's number. So this car has an 89 kilowatt hour net battery. So we take that number divided by today's consumption, 19.2 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, and then subtract about 3% in heat loss. We get a theoretical range under today's conditions of 450 kilometers. 450 kilometers, which is by far the most we have managed out of any electric car. It beats out the EQS 580 4Matic by quite a bit, but that was done in winter. This is done in, well, late summer, early fall. So the results aren't comparable. I'm pretty sure that that 580 would probably do even more, you know, considering if we did it with similar conditions as today. But ho thankfully I'll be testing a EQS 450 plus later uh, this month or next month. But yeah, still guys, it is pretty darn impressive getting that 450 kilometers of range. No, it is not 617, which is the WLTP. But again, look at the chart down below guys. No car will get 100% or even close to 100% of their WLTP rated range. But 450 kilometers with a real world speed that is close to 120 kilometers an hour, or basically 120 kilometers an hour on the speedometer. Yeah, that is pretty darn impressive. I mean, that is more than most people need. Yes, there are gonna be people who are like, I want 2000 kilometers of range going 300 kilometers an hour because I don't stop to go to the toilet, I don't stop to drink, I don't stop to eat, and I never rest. There are always gonna be those people, but for everybody else, the 99% of the population who aren't those people, 450 kilometers at motorway speeds is really darn impressive. And so is this car at motorway speeds. It's so quiet and comfortable. When I picked this up, I wasn't, you know, vibing with it, but after spending a day with this, yeah, I'm going to like this car. So hopefully I'll be doing, you know, a review in a few days. I only have this car for three days, guys. So. I'm really limited on what kind of content I'm able to do. But yeah, 
impressively 450 kilometers that is just awesome so guys i hope you enjoyed today's video if you did please drop me a thumbs up down below and for more car content as always please subscribe see you guys soon and goodbye